close as we get in South African politics to a mayoral debate. Gentlemen, please have a seat. We live in an amazing city, a, divi a diverse city, uh, the, place in Job the place in South Africa with money. It's also got some of the most unequal geography known to humankind. It's also the focal point of the local government elections. If the ANC loses Joburg, they'll lose Gauteng pretty soon, and then after that, the country. And we're joined by representatives of the three major parties. Councillor Parks Tower is chair of the ANC's Joburg region. He has, he has other jobs as well. But in this debate, he's representing the ANC's Joburg region. Uh, Councillor, maybe I should call you Parks for political well, reasons. Okay, is, is that okay? Good, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Herman Mashab is the DA's mayoral candidate, uh, the person the DA believes will be the new mayor of Joburg. Herman, good to see you. Thank Afternoon. you very much. And Floyd Chivambu is representing the economic freedom fighters in this debate. Floyd, good afternoon to you. I know you, you love journalists, but uh, I have no bouncers with me. So please feel free to express yourself. No, thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> um, Parks, let me start with you. you. I think you know the guy who runs the city pretty well, I think. Potholes are everywhere. Traffic lights don't work. If it rains, you know that traffic lights are not going to work for another two to three days. Blocks are left with, whole city blocks are left without electricity for, you know, three or four times a month, all the time. Why should we vote for the ANC to have another go? In fact, um, that's why in 2012 we pronounced that in the city of Johannesburg we'll invest in excess of 100 billion rents over 10 years which 100 billion rents would actually be to, the, to a large degree self-generated by the city of Johannesburg in infrastructure to deal with the infrastructure challenges in Johannesburg. I think I can say comfortably that we've reached the point where per capita we are the highest spender in infrastructure of all of sub-national government. That means both provincial and local authorities in the country. And uh, if you calculate in terms of expenditure, we are spending uh, just below the province of Gauteng and province of KwaZulu-Natal. So we've developed a very robust financial management plan that enables us to invest in infrastructure. And you can see that infrastructure being developed throughout the city of Johannesburg. You see it, but the lights still go out. I mean, it happens constantly. Where's the money going? Well, the, unless you're not driving on the highway, you wouldn't see the people that uh, all, all on a day-to-day -day basis say, actually, we can see the, re the redevelopment of the M1, but that redevelopment is causing a bit of inconvenience, but it guarantees us reliable roads. We said uh, a year ago that we'll be able to develop the M1 and M2 to be, and, and we use the words, same quality as e all roads, but without the e -tolls. Uh, and we're able to develop that, and you can see that happening in the, in the city of Joburg. We've redeveloped and reinstalled in excess of 800 intersections with new um, uh, traffic lighting systems, uh, and we're investing in uh, rehabilitation of our roads. We've spent in excess of 500 million on the rehabilitation of roads. So you can actually see the money uh, in communities and on the highways in more prominent ways than one. You go into Santon and you'd actually see the work that you're doing. If you drive over the M in, on the M1, you would see that we're developing a, a PRT system that links uh, Santon and Alexandra. So that's where the money is going. It's going towards the development of the city. Herman Mashabe, you're a businessman, you've been at the Free Market Foundation, you've never run a country, you've never run a province, you've never run a city, for all I know you've never, won a, you've never run a block watch. Um, <laughs> you've even missed the odd flight back to Joburg, which may make, make us wonder if you can run your own diary. Why would, why would a vote for you have any value? Well, I think it's interesting, uh, as uh, Mr. Malema earlier indicated, I think Mr. Malema was spot on to say that I'm not a politician. And without any doubt, uh, I don't want to really become uh, the politician, as uh, Mr. Malema has indicated, because uh, the reason why I've uh, really made myself available to the DA uh, to really be the mayor, uh, the mayor uh, for Johannesburg is to precisely to really avoid really being an ordinary kind of politician that this country has uh, developed over the last 22 years, uh, where we create this perception in our people that politicians is about uh, uh, themselves and about servicing themselves and their political parties. I've read, joined this race as a businessman, um, really coming from a very poor background, um, growing up uh, in, in, in a village. At the same time, yes, uh, at the age of uh, 22, decided to really take the opportunity 
to really drive myself and really go into business. At the time, remember Stephen, when the, <clears throat> the National Party government in this country said for me as a black man, I couldn't do it and I decided to really do it. And uh, here am I, 22 years into our democracy, um, privileged now after more than 30 years of uh, really running business and running really successfully, employing lots of people in the process. Do I really then sit back and say to myself, I'm a privileged person, sit back and really watch my country being destroyed by the political system that we see today. I'm now available to really serve this country and really use my privileged position, use my business experience uh, over 30 years of creating jobs. Because one thing that I really want to really be known in this country, in the city of Johannesburg, is to actually be the mayor's job. Uh, the, the mayor's, uh, the jobs mayor. Because if I really look at uh, the Mr. Huckstow in particular, how he has actually failed the people of Johannesburg in creating jobs. So we, we sit in, in a country, in a city, that is supposed to be creating jobs for our people. And unfortunately, Johannesburg today is shedding jobs. So we need to really arrest this unemployment situation. We need the economy to operate and operate in a manner that we can allow other entrepreneurs like myself to really be the player so that we can really get Johannesburg to really be the economic hub of this, uh, of this, of this country. And because Johannesburg is, has been responsible the last 100 years to drive the economy of this country. And I believe very strongly that unfortunately the ANC government at currently is actually failing our country, it's failing our people. So we need to really arrest uh, this spiral of uh, uh, the decay of our city and really bring it uh, in line with other cities uh, anywhere in the world. In particular today, we look at really with the success of, uh, of, uh, of our colleagues in, in Cape Town. We need to really model that. In fact, I believe we need Johannesburg to be better than Cape Town. So, so your argument is, I can run a business, I've created a business, I can therefore do well in politics. I mean, you're Donald Trump, you're going to make Joburg great again. <laughs> that's that's well, your argument. I think, uh, uh, you know, Stephen, um, you know, for me, fortunate enough, I'm not going into politics to go and steal people's money. Uh, like what we're seeing uh, that has been happening in our country the last 22 years where people go into politics to openly go and loot. Mm. I think we need to really stop this loot. So I'm really making myself available as, as, a, servant, as a servant of the people. Uh, uh, I've really made my money in, in the business uh, world. And I believe it's really time for me to really pay back to my country because I'm not really going to run away where I allow uh, political opportunists, political entrepreneurs to take over our city because privileged uh, South Africans like myself, we prepare to sit on the sideline and watch um, corrupt people run our city and our country. So I'm really making myself available and I'm really quite confident that people, residents and voters of Johannesburg will decide on us as a DA because we've got a track record of, of running uh, successful municipalities and fortunate enough I've, I've got more than 30 years of really running successful business in this country under extreme difficult conditions when um, t the loss of this country said to me I couldn't go into business. And, and uh, my success happened because I've always had the capacity to always surround myself with the best people. And that's really what Johannesburg requires today. It requires the leadership that can really put together the team, that can really run uh, Johannesburg on behalf of the residents, so that, that ultimately they are the ones who must be the beneficiaries, not us as politicians. Floyd, Floyd Chivambu, there's no other way to put this. Your entire party has less managerial experience than Herman Mashaba. You talk about land expropriation. You talk about mine nationalization. How would you implement these policies if you were to become the mayor of Joburg? I, I think we must deal with contextual issues first. That uh, You know, you must not force square pegs in round holes. To be experienced in business does not mean that you are relevant for government. It's two different things altogether. You can do very well on other things. It's like training for athletics and you want to be striker of Fana Mafana. You can't, you can't go anywhere. You will not add any value. There are, there's lots of developmental experience which you have to attain through practical observation of what happens on the ground, understand the needs of the people for you to be able to govern a city like Johannesburg. Johannesburg is the biggest city in South Africa and one of the biggest in the whole continent. And what happens historically with cities, the metropoli, is that there must be centers of production. They must create jobs. They must be able to generate income. Like most of the cities that grew in the last 30, 40 years, 
the, the Pearl River Delta economic zone, which is the most successful growth in a city in, in China, which includes Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and all those areas there. It, it illustrates that if you want to build a city, you must pay specific attention to the productive capacity of that city. Now, Johannesburg has been going on the reverse side. It has not been dealing with the productive component. It has been focusing mainly on services and financial uh, sector as part of the, the growth drivers and attracting investors which are mainly about consumption, like the malls, Mall of Africa, uh, Stain City, Modern Fontaine, all those that are things there. It's about consumption. Johannesburg has been turned into a dumping site of finished goods and services and products. And Johannesburg is supposed to be the production space where many people are able to get jobs. So the link to what we have asked of how then do we link the mineral resources to production? From the beginning when we speak as the EFF, we say that we want to nationalize mines in order to industrialize and process them locally, domestically. And here is a space that is provided in the name of Johannesburg with infrastructure, with linkages to all other provinces. It must be the industrial hub of South Africa and inspires hope for majority of our people. It must continue to give jobs. As a matter of fact, Johannesburg number of income earners has declined dramatically between 2001 when the first census happened and 2011 when it happened now recently. That like, it, like, it's 29% families here in Johannesburg who are reporting that they do not have any source of income. And these are areas we must pay specific attention and utilize the resources that are available to create jobs and make sure that each and every person who comes here is given a job. And with always in mind an anticipation that an area which is a metropoli is going to grow in population, then you must provide shelter for everyone. You must provide houses. Uh, you must provide electricity, water. You must not take the little resources that you have and go and build bicycle lanes like Parks is doing at the expense of Alexander, at the expense of Hobbesville, at the expense of Strait, at the expense of Deep Sloot. People are staying like pigs in Deep Sloot, but Parks is building bicycle lanes. For white people, there's not even bicycles. Why? Because he went to London and then he saw people riding bicycles on bicycle lanes there. There's no bicycles in Johannesburg. The model of development and infrastructure that we're speaking about is wrong. And also to measure your success through 100 billion on infrastructure, your measurables are wrong. You're competing on a wrong realm altogether. I thought you were going to be saying that since I was a mayor, we've created this number of jobs. We've empowered this number of families. You have, you have created infrastructure, yes, but for rich people. Majority of that it is about making sure that rich people live well. Why is Straitler the same way it was in 1994? Why are people being taken by the river, Jack Skay, and falling into the river? They, they, they disappear every year whenever it's the rain season. Why yeah. is Deep Sloot like it is now? Those you... are the issues that we're focusing on, and it links very well to the issue of strategic control of strategic sectors of the economy so that we can make Johannesburg a city that creates jobs for majority of our people. I'm going to stop you there. I don't want to bring back any bad memories for you. I'm, I, I would like you to respond, uh, Parks, to that particular charge that uh, what, what, what Floyd Chibamdu has said. A, about bicycle lanes. I mean, he has a point. I use them, but he has a point. And, of course, the claim that what you're doing is not working. No, actually, it doesn't have a point. Because he actually doesn't understand that for a great number of people that live in Dipslot, Alexandra, and, and Ivory Park, the primary mode of transport is bicycles. Ah, way! <laughs> way! <laughs> well, way. you see, these but are, there's these no are, bicycle lane in Dipslot. These, these, these are people that are in denial of the reality of the primary <laughs> mode of transport for certain people in the city of Johannesburg. These are real people that we interact with on a daily basis. If you haven't seen them, maybe it's because you don't want to see them. <laughs> but I can tell you that, in no, fact, we'll the reality there. is we'll that there. you have people <laughs> in Alexandra, people in Ivory Park. Do you know the project in Ivory Park that's a community-based project about bicycling? About bicycles in Ivory Park. Do you know about complete streets in Ivory Park where we're dealing with cycling in Ivory Park? Of course you don't know. So you'll ask, where are they? But I'm talking about projects that are community-based projects that say we want to cycle, create the roads. No, we'll, but we'll you don't we'll want the people we'll of Ivory them. Park to go and ride their bicycles in centre. Mm -hmm. you know, let's yeah. give you a context, right? Do you, know, do you know the model that you have adopted in the city of London, right? 
majority of people who work in the city, they stay just in the outskirts of the city. And the city of London provides bicycles for those people to take from home and leave it in the next. And the city provides bicycles. But the spatial planning of apartheid has kept the townships very far. You can't say that you are building bicycle lanes for the people of Dipsloot. Where are they going to ride bicycles to? To Senten? To Johannesburg? Okay. For how long? For how many days? How are you going to build bicycles for people of Soweto? Bicycle lanes in Soweto? Right to where? Because in Brownfontein, the workers of Johannesburg do not stay in Fontaine. They do not stay in Senten. There is no one who stays in the vicinity of Senten who needs a bicycle to go to land. But they lines in Senten, which are made by you. A lot of money, hundreds of million have been spent on bicycle lanes. Where is the sense in that? Right. There's no proper Floyd. thinking around the whole bicycle lanes. It must be about then. And that is one thing we're going to do when we take over on the third of August. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Park Tao okay. 30 seconds, 30 seconds to respond to that. But I do want to move on. I could talk about bikes all day, but we do need to move on. Well, firstly, I think that there's a fundamental misunderstanding about the role of cycling as a means of transport in an <laughs> urban system. Uh, but that notwithstanding... When you develop a city, you're not just developing a city for a particular group. You're developing a city for a comprehensive set of people with different interests. You're developing a city that wants to reduce congestion and improve mobility. You're developing a city that should be able to absorb the number of people that come into that city and would want to participate in the economic activity of that city. But just coming back to You've the got issue You've literally jobs. five seconds, I promise. Um, we're coming to jobs now. Yeah, yeah. So if, I can, if we can close the cycling conversation off, mm. there'll be more on Twitter, I'm sure. Herman Mashaba, I want to talk about the economy now, and we'll, we'll get to this. Um, we know that the, the South African economy at the moment is contracting. Contra if you were a mayor, you'd fix that. Were well, you going well, to create? I'm, I'm hold on, to hold let on. You Are you going to create free enterprise zones in Joburg so your free market foundation buddies can experiment on us? Well, uh, without any doubt. Uh, for, for us to really be able to really revive the economy of, uh, of Johannesburg, uh, we need entrepreneurs. Um, economy. How one would really do this, really to, to deal with red tape that makes it really difficult uh, at the current moment uh, to, uh, uh, to really operate in, in the city of Johannesburg. Uh, that the government can actually play today is... Uh, on our procurement system, which uh, I wonder, uh, Mr. Park Stowe's government is not really doing this. The tender system, I cannot understand how we cannot already open it up, cut it up in small pieces, allow small businesses to really be the players, and really make the adjudication process as transparent as possible. Because by so doing, you're allowing more people to really be the players. That's something that, uh, thank you. That's something that you, you know, one can immediately do because government really does procure. At the same time, we really look at the, the decay of our city with buildings uh, today hijacked by uh, the criminal uh, syndicates and, and so on. Why don't we really immediately take over? When I take over on the 4th of August, because I'm confident we're going to be taking over, <laughs> immediately do an audit of this uh, 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 city uh, buildings, renovate them so that we can really allow our people to come back in, into the city, use them as, as commercial spaces, use them to, to build uh, low-cost uh, housing. You know, it, I'm in discussion with some of the private uh, developers in our city who are producing wonderful uh, low-cost housing I infrastructure in our city. Today, the reason why this is not happening at, this, at the right speed is because uh, Mr. Park Stowe's government is not really making it possible because of the level of corruption that happens with the system. Okay, I'm so stop. what we need to do is let us run a, a transparent, open system so that we allow more and more uh, Jobic entrepreneurs to actually really be the players. And I think these are things that we can really easily do. Let's really deal with corruption run a system and government that is not tolerable. Co corruption has got to really be an enemy number one because corruption, unfortunately, what it does, it really destroys everything that but happens what, in the how system. How much evidence of, there is, uh, of corruption is there in the city of Joburg? I mean, other parts of government, sure, we can talk about, you know who we can talk about. But in Joburg, I mean, how many cases of corruption are there? They're very few. Well, I think uh, just really... Well, come on, let's name one. Well, uh, 
just really lo look at really what happened in, in the JMPD. Today, if you, you, you really look at the system of corruption that's happening in, in, in our city, so what we're saying is uh, with, with the tender system, open it up. If you don't if you want to avoid corruption, open our tender system to be open, transparent, so that the public is, is invited to actually participate. In that way, then you can really deal with corruption to make sure that it does not exist. Why is the government not allowing the system to really happen? Only Mr. Parkstow and his government can really tell us why. Councillor Parkstow, sorry, Parks, political reasons. Um, you, I mean, you, 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 we can talk about corruption, we can fight about that, but, but the fact is that Joburg's economy under you is not growing quickly. That's the fact of the matter. Well, and, and there are a number of issues that we need to deal with. And oh, so it's not your with. fault. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> There are a number of issues that we are dealing with, and these are important issues that we're dealing with. For an economy to grow, you require to invest in infrastructure to support growth of your economy. And we're investing in that more than any other municipality in the country, per capita, and in terms of actual money spent. We developing infrastructure to support the economy. The second is that we're driving the most advanced youth development program internationally alongside that of Toronto that focuses on young people and channels young people into job opportunities. And these are opportunities ranging from the network of companies that absorb the young people through the Volinde Lechos program that we're running, but it's also, it's also young people where we're able to break down barriers to entry. And some of those barriers to entry include university education, we're driving a um, massive open online varsity program at our libraries where young people are actually able to get internationally certified degrees and certification and they've, they've begun their own enterprises. People in Alexandra have established their own enterprise in, in uh, web design and are transacting with people in KZN and Limpopo on the basis of a program that we've developed for them. So if you want to ask where in Alexandra, in Jababu, in Ennetale, these are the communities that are beneficiaries of direct programs of the massive open online learning program. But most important is about uh, value chain participation. Value chain participation both in the public sector and in the private sector. You know when Mr. Mashab was busy marching uh, we were actually making a pronouncement together with AB InBev about value chain participation in the investment they are making in the country. So a partnership between us and the private sector for value chain participation along the entire value chain of their work over and above the other programs that we're talking about. That's one company. There are a number of other companies that we've got value chain participation programs in. And the list of programs in terms of value chain participation include MASMA, they include VW, because the notion that in fact public sector alone will create jobs is not true. It is about creating the platforms for access to job opportunities and the platforms for enterprise development. We've got, we've incubated and supported in excess of 50,000 enterprises, small enterprises in the city of Johannesburg at our SMME hubs that you have in the city of Johannesburg. These are actual real enterprises that are getting incubation and access to, to uh, value chain participation across both public and private sector value chains. Floyd Chivambu, <clears throat> you spoke earlier about following the Chinese example and the Chinese example was really driven by manufacturing. Yes. And particularly in that part of China, it was driven by low-cost factories with low-cost workers. Is that the example we should follow? That seems to be, I mean, there is a race to the bottom in manufacturing around the world now. It's surely inevitable if we're going to manufacture things here, there's no other way than to have low-cost workers. Look, you must distinguish between two things. One, we're speaking about the principle of having Johannesburg as the production capital of South Africa. Mm. As the city, as the city that creates jobs, that is a production space. Those are structural issues that you have to deal with. Make sure that this industry that processes goods and services, instead of being a dumping site of finished goods and services, there's a mall of Africa which has got possibly more than 80% of goods and services from China, Europe, and America. Why can't we build local capacity to deal with each and every consumable that can be dealt with here? But, but how are we going to do that, 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 that is my question. And, 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 and you, know, you know from the beginning as the EFF, we never say that a job must, must come at the expense of it being a quality job. At the center of the jobs that the EFF speaks about is quality job with proper minimum wage, with proper salary, with pension funds. That is why we reject wholeheartedly the whole issue of PEPWP in the model which is being created now because 
Those people are being exploited. They're given 2,500. Sometimes they're paid through an envelope and they don't even know what is their work schedule. They work for six months. They cannot take care of themselves. We speak about a labor absorptive model of service delivery where you train our people to deal with issues which the municipalities are responsible for. Instead of giving WBHO and all these criminal enterprises a tender to build roads, let's train our people, employ excellent project managers who are going to build roads, repair our, 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 our infrastructure, and make sure that we deliver basic services, sanitation, everything else that a municipality does must be done internally. That is what we talk about, and that must always keep in mind the labor absorptive capacity of that because the private companies that deliver services do not care about the job. That's fine. They always give Sorry, low jobs and we do not compromise on the quality job. I need we, to interject we, here, yes, Floyd. Yes. Uh, the question is, yes. you say that Joburg must be a production hub. It must be a yes. manufacturing hub. Yes. How are you going to do that if the goods coming from China are cheaper than the goods that we can create? Because their workers are cheaper than our workers. I don't like it, but it's do an know, established fact. You know, That's my question. How are you going to do that? Do you know one of the constitutionally provided municipal functions which has never been exploited by any of the existing municipalities in South Africa is the fact that a municipality can regulate municipal trade, not just of street traders, of everything else that can happen. We speak about protected industrial expansion. And that is what a city should do. You must support the producers of goods and services through a variety of incentives. So you wouldn't be able to buy something from China yes, in Germany. So that you can globally compete and you're able to produce your own goods and services. But also you can lower the number of things that are dumped into your own municipality by passing legislation and bylaws that says that the things that are sold here must be produced in the municipality. And what so, does that so, do? It creates so, jobs for the people. I want to I understand exactly what we're talking about here. You want to create a trade border around the city of Joburg. That's it. It's not, in it's this not, city, it's, you will it's, it's only a, buy a, a South African-made cell phone. That's what you say. It, 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 you, know, you know, you must give yourself time to study how all the cities that are successful, the, 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 the so-called developmental zones. I gave you an example of the Pearl River Delta Economic Zone. Yeah. It's a, count, it's, a, it's a region within China. With cheap workers. No, it's not, it was not only because of that. There were lots of incentives which the region was able to provide because it had infrastructure, it had capacity. All the areas that are cities, that are metropolitan, that grow with speed and grow in quality in terms of the values of their economy, they've got their own sets of rules that attract investments, that boost production. That is one thing that you must at least give yourself attention to learn everywhere in the world. If you, if you speak about Tokyo, if you speak about the cities that, that caught up in terms of production uh, and they came late, all of them had a different set of rules in terms of trade and production of but goods But none of services. them banned the importation of goods as a city. I mean, that's what you're saying, is that the Mall of Africa must be stocked never, with only no, South African it's, goods. It's, it's, it's not narrow like that. It's, a, it's, a, it's to say that because we're a city that is expected to provide jobs to our people, we should have rules that provide space for the productive capacity to be increased here. Not the poorly conceptualized township economy, which is about condemning black people to small spaza shops in Soweto, in Alexander, and everywhere else, without integrating them into the mainstream economy. So the kind of economic transformation that we speak about as the EFF is that Ordinary people in Alexander, in Deep Sloot, in Tembelisha, everywhere must be integrated into the mainstream economy, be the producers of goods and services that are consumed here and other parts of the world. That is what happens. That is what is, should be happening. Not, not to say that township economy is just revamping of spaza shops and, and that is where it ends. It means you are condemning our people to permanent underdevelopment in the manner in which the city of Johannesburg has been doing. And that shows, by the way, in the number of people who are losing jobs in Johannesburg, in the number of people that do not have access to quality food, in the number of people who are losing income, it shows that there is no city that is placing the economy at the center of its developmental program. Okay. It's only okay. speaking about infrastructure because it's going to protect the rich and it gives up for the rich to travel safely and far much more uh, 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 giving, getting access to better services, but the people are not benefiting from whatever they're doing. All right, Poverty so you've, you've spoken is worsening for over, in Johannesburg. Yeah, you've spoken, okay, the House you know, recognizes him. You know, fortunate enough, uh, residents of and voters of Johannesburg are clever enough uh, to realize uh, that uh, EFF uh, would really be 
treating the current diarrhea that our country is suffering from and really pushing it and treating it with uh, laxative. Because you can imagine moving from ANC to AFF, you're actually taking someone suffering from uh, diarrhea, you give him laxa as a treatment. And, and fortunate enough, I don't really believe um, uh, voters of Johannesburg uh, would really be that stupid. So I think that is really something that gives me the comfort that our people are clever enough to actually realize this. So you can imagine the type of system that... You know, uh, you know, <laughs> sorry, Floyd, just, just let him finish. The, the, the kind of system that, you, that is really ideologizing, ideologizing about. Let me tell you, just give a practical example of, of my own personal life, just briefly. Uh, you've, got, you've got 45 to, to, seconds. You know, starting my career mm. after abandoning my education at the age of 19, I the then, I then story, really right? decided, you know what, let me take responsibility for my life. Worked my first job, any 175 rands a month. There was no one offering me the, the type of job that he's talking about. But what I did, I decided, you know what, Herman, use this opportunity to climb up the ladder. The first job spa gave me an opportunity to climb up the ladder because I was in charge of my life. Worked for a salary 30 months of my life. Two companies, seven months and 23 months. And during that period, that's when I realized that I needed to really take my life to the next level. And that is really the kind of city that I want Johannesburg to really be. Create opportunities for, for more and more entrepreneurs in this country. Because right. hmm? I promise because you that 45 is really seconds. What, yeah, that, promise. Is, that is what I thought when the new South Africa started that we're going to really see an explosion of black entrepreneurs. Mm. Unfortunately today, we only see okay. failure. Parks, I almost called you councillor, I'm sorry. Um, you belong to a party that won't tell us who our mayoral candidate is, who its mayoral candidate is. I mean, in the past, it used to tell us who we voted for after we voted. That's a little bit, I don't know, undemocratic, isn't it? Well, the NC has said that it would announce mayoral candidates for the metros and other strategic municipalities before the election. So I anticipate that that announcement would be made within the next week. So we'll get it in the next week? I anticipate that it will be in the next week, yeah. And will that person's the, face be on election posters, or will, be it, will it be the, uh, the ANC's number one leader? Well, well, well you, you can't put up a mayoral candidate and not use the mayoral candidate as the face of your campaign. You have to put up the mayoral candidate as the face of your campaign. Do you think if the face of the mayoral campaign was President Jacob Zuma as the face of the ANC, it would hurt uh, the ANC's chances of keeping Joburg? But, I mean, that, 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 that's, a, that's not a practical question, is it? <laughs> it's a political question. not a practical question. question. You're asking a question about the president of a party and republic as to whether he could be mayoral candidate. No, he won't be mayoral candidate. We're dealing with the, the elections where we will be reporting to the people of Johannesburg of the work that we're doing in the city of Johannesburg and of the vision we have for the city of Johannesburg. And, indeed, you've heard from my colleagues, pie in the sky. <laughs> I want to talk about rates now. Okay, it's a middle-class audience. I think they all pay rates, many of them in the city of Joburg. Floyd Chivambu, if, if you become mayor, if the EFF wins Joburg, what will you do to rates? Will they go up or will they go down? And particularly people who pay rates. I mean, I realize that it's middle-class people who pay the most rates. That's fine. Progressive tax, it works. But no, look, are you going to increase the rates that those people pay? No, look, the, uh, the EFF primarily will represent the poorest of the poor, the people sure. of Orange Farm, of uh, lowly... Of, uh, of Soweto, majority part of Soweto, of Ilas Lady, of Tembelise, of Deep Sloot, of Alexander. Those are the people that we represent, and majority of those people are unable to pay rates. Our principal position is that we must maximally collect rates and taxes from those who can pay the rates and taxes, but we must not punish those that cannot pay. We say that we do not want to develop a, 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 a client relationship between the people and the municipality, that if you have not paid, you are a customer, you cannot get the service. We want to protect the poor because the city has dismally failed, as we have illustrated now, to create income generating activities for our people. They are unable to get any access to any basic service. So the city must build capacity to, in the meantime, before we create jobs for a majority of our people, to provide free quality electricity for those who cannot afford to provide free quality water for those that cannot afford, to make sure that the exempted, the old pensioners must be exempted from paying rates and taxes. Because what government does now, it gives old people money with these hands and come and fetch it for rates and taxes with the other hand. And majority of our people are condemned to permanent poverty. So and that is that our approach is that for those that can pay, 
will maximally and strictly collect the rates and taxes, but those that cannot pay, they cannot be treated like customers, will never be cut off services. The rich must begin to appreciate that we have a country to develop. It's about giving basic needs to all of us. So, it's so not rates, about excluding certain individuals. Rates would go up for people who can pay. I mean, I accept that. I'm not arguing with you. I just want to know. Um, and would it go up by 50%, 100%? We're, we're, not, we're not saying... I'm not, I never said they're going to go up. We're gonna, I said we're going to maximally collect to make sure that there's maximal <laughs> Sounds collection. Sounds like the same thing. I never said... <laughs> it's not, not, maximal collection means that you collect from all the people who are supposed to pay because they've got a huge number of people who are not paying rates and taxes and they've got money, they've got income and not paying in Johannesburg. So maximal collection means that instead of collecting from the 60% that is paying, we're going to collect from 100% of the eligible payers. And then that resource that would have been generated will be utilized to subsidize the poorest of the poor who are unable to pay rates and taxes, who are unable to pay for electricity, who are unable to pay for basic things that they have to, to take care of. That is our approach in terms of our own diligence. But also the municipality will engage in a variety of other productive and profitable activities that will generate money for the city okay. to take care of those that cannot take care of themselves. That is our principle. Thank you. Herman Mashaba, the same question to well, you. I, Middle I, class, are you going to give them a rate reduction? Because that's who, you, who votes for you? With, I think, uh, Stephen, really looking at our, our current structure that uh, uh, run the, to by, by the ANC, is it fair? I think if you really look at the rate of collection, uh, collection unfortunately, a lot uh, uh, left, uh, left to be desired there. I believe what we need to do is really make sure that we put in the right type of structure and systems in place so that we collect as much as possible. We don't really have to really increase uh, our rate, uh, rates and taxes at the moment, but we need to ensure that we have systems and processes in place to really collect as much as possible. But at the same time, yes, for those uh, South Africans or people of the, the city who are unable to, on a short-term basis, absolutely, we will really make sure that we take care of them. But at the same time, what we need to do as we run in this process on, on a long-term basis, let us arrange to make sure that the economy grows. Because when the economy grows, our people will really be able to really move up the ladder. And as people move up the ladder, then they've got to really pay for, the, for, for, the, the, for services that they receive from the city. Nothing is going to really be for free. And that's something that we really need to, to really teach our people. But at the end of the day, yes, we understand and appreciate the fact that there are those that are not in a position to do it immediately. Yes, we will really get other societies to assist because that is really what we're doing already in the Western Cape. 70% of our budget goes into, into poorer areas. And that is really what I'm committing to the voters of Johannesburg. That I'm going to really run a government that is going to be pro-poor. But at the same time, we need an economy that grows because when the economy grows, then it's going to allow people to really come out of that poor network. Because I don't want to live in a society where 20 years down the line, people are still poor, all of them. Let us grow an economy so that 20 years down the line, then all of us are in a position to really run this economy properly for everyone. Because one thing for sure, we're not going to really run an economy on an exclusive basis where we're saying you're running it for a certain group of people. I believe all of us as South Africans, we're going to run this economy and this country on the basis of all of us as South Africans. Yes, in the, in the short term, there are those that are privileged, like myself. Yes, we need to really make sure that we can help our poor communities long term to to, uh, to come up. That is the reason why when, when I take over on the 4th of August, okay. we will ensure that uh, we, we, we increase That's our spend in poorer communities so that we develop the infrastructure in Alexander, in, in Hopeville, and all those areas so that but, we okay. uplift Herman, those you've, communities. You've spoken for a long time. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you have spoken for a long time. Parks, you're going to keep it going at what? Inflation plus 3% for the rich and minus 3% for the less rich. Well, firstly, let me deal with the issue that Herman is raising because he's talking about a municipality that consistently underspends on its grant funding. You've just sent back in Cape Town 300 million rands that was supposed to go to Philippi and sent it back to government. And guess who's waiting for that money? Mm. The city of Joburg. And where is it going? To the people of Johannesburg. <laughs> So, so if you're going to do in Johannesburg what's happening in Cape Town, you're saying that consistently you're going to underspend the uh, Urban Settlement Development Grant. And these are grants that are intended to give the people that need transformation, transformation. So if you want to bring that note, I don't think that's what the people of Joburg want. They don't want a city that underspends on its grants. We're spending 100%. 
And we're at the door of the National Housing Department saying, me, 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 I'm asking for more. I can spend it for my people. Now, that's the first issue. The second issue is that we've consistently said that the rates issue is about a basket of goods approach. Because remember, sometimes you have a situation where the electricity increases are much higher because it's a pass-through cost, and you then have to keep your rates either inflation or below inflation so that you're able to mitigate the impact on the people of Johannesburg across the board. So we take a basket of goods approach to rates and tariffs and say what is affordable to the rate payers of Johannesburg as a basket of goods and, and then be able to set the tariffs as a basket of goods. And then we talk about a rates policy that's progressive. It's progressive to the extent that it says that for those people who require free basic services, it's not across the board. So we don't take a regressive tax policy approach. Approach. We take a progressive tax policy approach that says, come into the city, we would be able to look at income per family, we would be able to look at number of dependents, and would give you electricity much more than the national standard to meet the requirements of that family, but would be able to cap it to the needs of that family. And we're also saying that, for example, the poor across the board, in fact, every Johannesburg across the board gets a rebate up to 300,000 of 100% of the rates that you're supposed to pay. So poor households do not pay rates when we're talking about rates. And then when it comes to discounting to people who in fact are in vulnerable positions like pensioners, if your property is less than 2 million rents and you earn less than 7,000 rents of your actual pension, whether it's public and or private pension, you get a 100% rebate. So it's targeted, it's progressive, it looks at the most vulnerable, and that's how we're approaching rates and taxes in Georgia. Mm. Well, I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid we have come, you know, uh, we could go on for a while, but it's lunchtime, and if I had to take a vote on what people would prefer to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, Park Stahl, the chair of the, ANC, of the ANC's Joburg region, Herman Mashaba, the DA's mayoral candidate, Floyd Chavambu from the EFF, who, you look like you've got something burning to say, I'll give you 30 seconds. No, I wanted to understand, where did Park spend these billions of <laughs> rents on housing, because there's never been housing delivery in Johannesburg. And even the houses that are given is low quality. They've been taking money of the state to build <coughs> a, a profit-seeking uh, rental stock which overcharges our people that do not uh, better their lives. Where are the houses? Where was ever been a free housing delivery in, in Johannesburg? People of Alexander are still stuck there. In Freedom Park, in, in Deep Sloot, they, since they've been dumped there, there's never been any changes. Like the last time Parks, there was yeah, anything significant was in Cosmo City. Where, Where has it done that? Flerov, Luferin, Tembelise, <laughs> Deep Slur, okay. Alexander. <laughs> Where do you We're going to stop no, it there. It's not true. Where ladies and gentlemen. It's not true. <laughs> it's it's going to be a great true. green room. You want to come and watch. We'll live stream it from the green room. <laughs> Park Star, Herman Mashaba, Floyd Chavambi, thank you very much indeed. Go and vote in August. <laughs> thank you.